Does the Bible ever identify the certain man of Matthew 26, 18? Let's go read Matthew 26, verse 18. Now, I'm going to read it from the King James Version. The individual who asked the question apparently wasn't asking from the King James Version. He was asking it from another version. I'll show you why. And he said, that's Jesus, folks, go into the city to what? To such a man. Other translations say, to a certain man. But such a man carries the same concept, does it not? In both instances, guess what? The individual is unidentified as far as this text is concerned. And say unto him, the master saith, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. Three Gospels make mention of this same incident. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And guess what? Not one of them names the man's house who was used. Put it down in your eternal book of questions that you're going to take to heaven with you. Who was this man? He's not named whatsoever. Now what's interesting is that Luke gives us a full account of this event even though he does not name the individual. Here's what Luke tells us. Jesus specifically nominates Peter and John to go prepare the Passover. Secondly, he tells them to go into the city and when they get there, they're going to find a man carrying a pitcher of water. And as soon as you see that man carrying a pitcher of water, I want you to follow him. And he'll take you to exactly the right house. When you get there, then you are to ask the goodman of the house about the guest chamber and whether the guest chamber is ready for the Passover. The goodman of the house, folks, is none other than the owner himself. It is he who is not identified. Luke also tells us that this was a furnished room. In other words, it was not an empty room that had to have things brought into it. It had everything that was necessary there in order to carry out the Passover except the Passover elements themselves and Peter and John were to provide those things. As far as the identity of this man, guess what? We will never know. Not in this life. But, before we leave the question, I want us to look at three lessons. I know what you're thinking. It only says two up there, preacher. Well, these two are lessons that center upon Jesus. And the first one is this, folks. Jesus came in contact with a lot more people than just His apostles and a few women in the city of Jerusalem. And these individuals that He came in contact with, He made relationships with them, and they provided Him some wonderful assistance on numerous occasions. And here we find an owner of a house willing to donate one of his rooms so that Jesus and his twelve apostles could partake of the Passover. But secondly, Jesus prepared for the Passover. Folks, the Passover feast was one of three major feast days of the Jews, wasn't it? There was Passover, there was Pentecost, and there was the Feast of Tabernacles. I find it interesting that it was Jesus who had made contact with this homeowner in order to have this room ready for Passover. Jesus made certain that the Passover was definitely going to be observed. Notice, He was faithful to keep the commandments of the Almighty God. He didn't find some excuse to miss. 
He didn't find some reason to opt out. He understood. God has commanded this feast, and we're going to keep the feast of Passover. He did not leave it to chance. Now that leads to the lesson for us. Question. Is the Lord's day a feast day? See, we don't think about it in those terms, do we? But folks, when you and I come together, we celebrate a feast, do we not? Every first day of the week when we come together, we feast upon the Lord's Supper, don't we? And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, that is to involve themselves in the Lord's Supper, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight, Acts 20, verse 7. Every first day of the week, you and I come together in order to partake of a feast day, the Lord's Supper. Folks, if we're going to be like our Lord, we need to do two things. Number one, we need to prepare for it, don't we? This thing that you and I are about to do is commanded of God and it is of vital importance as far as God is concerned. He has put it in the very worship of the church. That makes it important. And I need to prepare myself for that day. And secondly, I need to be present for it, don't I? Folks, it's vital to us. If you and I are going to be like our Lord, we're going to follow in His footsteps, then you and I are going to observe our feast day just as Jesus observed His feast day. 